We made it to Prince George and my tires still looked okay. We found a shop there called NR Sport and Ski and again found one of the friendliest shops I've ever encountered. They dug through all of their stock and they could not find a 120-90-18 tire either. I had no idea they would be that difficult to find, but they did have one that was gently used that a friend of theirs had dropped off and they gave it to me for free. So that was awesome because tires in Canada cost about double what they do in the U.S. The owner also informed us that Prince George has the highest crime rate in Canada and advised us to be cautious where we left our bikes for the night. So we decided to ride a little ways south to the small town of Hickson where we found extremely friendly people and a great place to stay at the Creekside Camp and Hotel and uh, made a disaster of our hotel room and did some tire changes there. After a break there in Hickson, we continued down and got on the Sea to Sky towards Vancouver. That is an awesome ride also. Fantastic views all around. Uh, we stopped partway down though to have pizza and some dinner and suddenly it was dark. So we just went down the road about one mile and there was a little campsite called Nairn Falls. And we set up camp and then right after that it started raining like crazy again. We were really glad that we stopped when we did. The next morning it was still sprinkling a little bit, but we went ahead and did the short hike to Nairn Falls. And When we got to Vancouver, we went to the Trev Dealey Motorcycle Museum and looked at motorcycles. They had a special exhibit on motorcycles and cinema, all different bikes that were popularized through films throughout the ages, and a bunch of antique old bikes there too. Yeah, it's really cool, and then we went and stayed with our wonderful hosts Bob and Christina, who gave us a coupon for the Anthropology Museum, recommended we go check it out. We went the next day, looked around at all of their totem poles, native art. They have art from all over the world there in massive selection. Finally, we went to the border to get back into the U.S. and found about a 70-minute wait in traffic. I was trying to convince James to lane split with me, but he didn't want to, partly because he didn't want to get in trouble, but partly because his saddlebags were really wide and hard luggage and he was really afraid he was going to scratch someone's car. The wait was awful. I had to keep starting and stopping my bike and my battery died and then I had to push it to the front and through to the other side. But luckily, uh, by the time I had pushed it for, you know, 40 minutes, it uh, the battery got enough juice to get itself started without me having to bump start it. <laughs> We'd had a plan to have lunch in Seattle and go look at the Space Needle but the traffic there was so horrendous and we had thought it might be cold and rainy so we were wearing all of our waterproof gear and I had my waterproof socks on and it ended up being extremely hot and just barely moving stop and go traffic. We were both overheating like crazy, our bikes were getting hot. Finally we just got back on the freeway, went out of town a little bit and found some food and then headed down to Portland where we arrived around midnight and stayed with my friend Jack. We relaxed there for a few days, running around town, eating donuts, going to bookstores, doing all the Portland things. We also met up with Bill Dwyer, aka Atlas Rider, who I'd met a few years ago at the Overland Expo when he was still planning to do his ride to South America. He's back now and he wrote a book about it called Anxiety Across the Americas. So if you haven't read it already, definitely go on Amazon and check it out.